What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about one of the lesser known features contained in the scale tool that can save you a ton of time. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so stick around till the end because I'm gonna show you a tip for the objects that distort when you scale them. But I wanna start off by showing you uh, one of the features is a scale tool that I don't think a lot of people know about or use. Um, and if I'm wrong, I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments below. But um, basically what you can do is everyone knows that you can use the scale tool to scale by a factor, right? So if I select an object, tap the S key, and then say that I scale something like this, right? I can type in a value of like 0.5 or whatever. That's what shows up down here is the scale notation. So I could type in like one and a half, whatever, right? 0.1 in order to bring something down to a 10th of what it was before, that kind of thing. I think everyone kind of knows that that's there, but what gets a little bit overshadowed because the little bar in the lower right hand corner pops up with a, uh, with a little point in there is you can also scale by distance. And so what that means is that means when you select an object right here and you activate the scale tool, it creates a bounding box around this object, right? So what that bounding box allows me to do is if I single click on this and move my mouse, I can type in a distance. So for example, say I want this to be a inch and a half, I can type in 1.5 inches, hit the enter key right here, and that's gonna make this bounding box so the, the distance from this point to this point is an inch and a half. And we can measure that in order to see that, right? It's one and a half inches. So I can also scale this and type in a value of like five and a half if I wanted this to be a two by six right here. So now this is gonna have a distance of five and a half. And for some reason I typed in three the first time but see how this is now five and a half. But this is super valuable for objects that are uniform in shape like this, and you just want to adjust their length. Now, understanding that you could come in here and you could use the push-pull tool in order to do this for simple shapes, um, but say I wanted this to be eight feet long, I could just type in a value of eight feet and hit the enter key. Now, where that is super cool, and I didn't even realize they made this change, they actually made it in SketchUp 2023, is back in the day, right? This is SketchUp 2022. And so back in SketchUp 22, another reason that um, people didn't really know about this is you'd activate the scale tool and you could type in something in feet, right? So you could type in three feet right here and hit the enter key and this would scale this to three feet. But if you tried to scale it to something in inches, in order to put the inches sign in here, you had to tap the shift key, which wouldn't work. So I could try to type in like 12 inches, but as soon as I hit shift, what it would do is it would toggle into uniform scale mode like this in a way that didn't really let you type in those dimensions. And so a lot of people thought that that function didn't even really work. And I guess they actually fixed this in SketchUp 2023. I didn't even notice, um, cause that's definitely something I would have highlighted. But now we're working in SketchUp 2024, I can come in here and I can select this object. I can tap the S key to scale it and I can scale it to whatever length I want. So I could type in eight feet right here, or say that we wanted this to be 12 inches, they fixed it, where if you hold the shift key down in order to type in the inches function, it doesn't shift you to uniform scale mode anymore. So what that means is that means that now I can come in here and I can type in, and we wanna make sure we get the middle point right here, but now I could type in something like 48 inches and hit the enter key and this would scale this to be 48 inches. Now, this is especially valuable in objects that can be scaled in a linear way like this without distorting. So for example, I've got a tongue and groove object in here. Well, I can scale this object in this long direction like this. And I could type in whatever value I want, right? 36 inches, hit the enter key, or 24 inches and hit the enter key. And that's gonna be live and that'll scale it in that direction. Now where this isn't necessarily as useful, and I'm gonna show you a tip to fix this in a second, is notice how if I try to scale it this way, like this, it's distorting the groove in here. So that's not gonna work. So anything that's gonna be like distortable, um, when you scale something, you're gonna wanna use a different solution. But you can definitely use this in order to scale in that direction right here, um, in that non-distorting direction. Now, one place where I'm using this a ton, and I use this in the uh, new module I'm about to release for the SketchUp Essentials course um, for cabinets, I use this a ton with dynamic cabinets because what it does is these are dynamic components, meaning if I scale them 
like this, the pieces are gonna resize so that they're not distorted, right? You can see how these maintain a three quarter inch thickness no matter what. So um, what that does is that allows me to drop this in a space really quick. But now what I can do is I can drop this in and say I want this to be a 24 inch cabinet box with this dynamic component. I'm gonna just type in a value of 24 inches right here. And that's automatically gonna size this to 24 inches, which when you're prepping for cabinets is extremely, extremely valuable and extremely fast. So I am a massive, massive fan of using this with dynamic components. And I wanna show you one more thing before we talk about how you can resize objects that do the distortion. Um, and that is, say that you have an object, and we'll just use these examples right here, but say that you have an object where your scale box isn't aligned. But say that you had an object like this one, and if you try to scale it, that scale box isn't aligned with your geometry. That's because your object geometry isn't aligned with your object axis. So you're gonna have problems in here because SketchUp is trying to scale this based on the object axis. Now you can kind of try to scale it this way, but that's gonna distort everything. It's not really what you want. But if your scale box is not aligned the way that you want, what you can do is you can double click in here. You can take the object axes, and what you wanna do is you want to align them with your object, like this. So notice what this has done, right, is this has given me the ability to align this to the edges in here, but then if I click off this object, notice how now the bounding box of the object is going to fit the orientation of the object. And so now, even though this object's axes and this object's direction don't align with the global axes, we can still use this in order to do that scale function by typing in a dimension. And so now let's talk about those distortion objects, which uh, got moved over here. So these are objects like this window, for example. I'm gonna make this a group right here. So you don't want to scale objects like these because what it's gonna do is it's going to, if we look in here, this is going to have a width of one inch. Well, if I scale this object like this, what it's gonna do is it's gonna distort the outside. You can see how now the outside of this is now distorted to like one and seven eighths of an inch. Well, what you can do instead is there's kind of a workaround with the sticky geometry. And so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna double click in here like this. And in this situation, say that I wanted this, and actually let's go outside of this for a second. So say that I wanted this to maybe have a width of, we'll call it 24 inches right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a guideline outside of the group, then I'm gonna double click in here and I'm gonna pick up all of this geometry on the end. So basically what I've done is I picked up all the edges, all the faces, everything that makes up the end of this object. Well, if I use the move tool, because this has that sticky geometry in here, this is going to resize the object to fit based on where that sticky geometry is. Well, if I move my mouse in this direction, like this, and I wanna hold the shift key so that we're locking that inference. That is extremely important when we do this. Um, but if I lock this inference like this, and we wanna pick up the bottom piece right here, notice how this is deforming the object in a way that it's been resized without me having to use the scale tool and distort everything. And one place where this becomes extremely valuable is say that you bring in like a library cabinet door or something like that. Again, we wanna keep our uniform width right here of two and a half inches. So if we scale this, that's not gonna work. Because if I scale this over right here, it's gonna mess up the width of that cabinet door right here. So we're at two and a quarter, or we were at two and a half. And so what I wanna do instead is I just wanna double click into this object and I just wanna pick up all of this geometry. You do have to be extremely careful when you do this, obviously, that you're picking up the right geometry. But if I move this over, right here, and then I probably wanna keep an eighth of an inch gap around the outside. Notice how I can move that geometry and this door is going to resize to fit that opening. So if you are in a situation where the scale tool isn't going to work because it's going to distort geometry, you can just use that sticky geometry in order to fix this. So if you do wanna learn more about how to use SketchUp, make sure you check out my course in the links down below. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.